Well, my name is Gustavo Spatela, and I'm a faculty here at the uh, Power Research, Stand, uh, Research and Extension Center. Uh, I'm a weed scientist. That's the area of uh, expertise. So, therefore, most of my projects are based on that, on different uh, uh, types of weed control and different um, crops. Uh, we. I do have some projects going in what we can call more traditional crops like uh, barley, uh, alfalfa, sugar beets, but um, we also are exploring some weed control options uh, for some other crops that are not traditional or common in this area. For example, this year I got a trial looking at weed control in sweet, uh, white, loop, white sweet lupine. And uh, in those cases, what uh, kind of drives the reason to do research is because uh, currently there's no uh, herbicides or a label for some of these crops. And therefore, there's not a lot of information on what kind of herbicides they could use. So uh, part of my position is doing extension too. So I get to interact with farmers and a lot of times Farmers come into my office and ask me, Gustavo, I'm going to plant this. What herbicides can I use? You know, and we find out that there's nothing labeled, which is liability for them. So we try to help them, try to get some basic information, and um, we got some of those projects looking at that. Uh, other projects that uh, I have going on is, for example, I'm looking at. Uh, working with soybeans, which is not a typical crop for this area. And some people ask, well, why do you want to grow soybeans in this part of the world? Well, the reason for that is in this area, they plant uh, a lot of dry beans for seed. And a lot of farmers now are thinking of uh, giving up on that crop because they have a huge problem in controlling nightshades late in the season. And uh, part of the reason is because there's not too many products to use in dry beans uh, that would effectively control. Now, if they remove the dry beans from their rotation, that's their only annual legume. And from the agronomic point of view, we'd like to have some annual legumes in our rotation. So soybeans could be an alternative for certain fields that have this problem because Soybeans have a whole variety of herbicides that you can use to control that. But we got to figure out exactly which is the right maturity group to, that would fit this area. So I got a project doing that there too. Uh, we have other projects where we test herbicides for alfalfa for hay, alfalfa for seed. Um, we're looking at um, Herbicide resistant is a big problem, so I have a project where I cooperate with uh, faculty from campus and from other universities. And uh, we have a, a huge project there looking at the impact of not only herbicides, but different cultural practices like uh, crop rotations and tillage, how they affect uh, herbicide resistance. Uh, we got variety trials, conventional variety trials for corn, for example. Um, uh, broadleaf control and barley, uh, we test uh, not only new products that are coming into the, to the market, but we also compare to some of the traditional products that they use here in the area because uh, we get those questions like, uh, hey, this new product, do you think it will work or not? Is it better than we were been using? So, we like to have some, some trials run here with our local species of weeds and see how they react. So there's a little bit of everything going on. So we're looking at kochia. It's a species, weed species, that it's a big problem to control in this area. And uh, it's been particularly, historically, it's been particularly difficult to control in sugar beets. When glyphosate resistant crops, glyphosate resistant uh, sugar beet was released to the market, the control of kosher was very successful. 
as years go by and we keep doing the same thing, we're not having the same level of success in controlling kochia. So we are looking at some alternatives to use, uh, actually before planting the, the crop. Uh, and uh, it's, it's looking, we find some products that we might be using. Uh, hopefully we'll, we'll get that information. We're repeating it this year. We're always a little bit cautious because one year data doesn't mean that you can draw a definite conclusion. We'd like to have at least two or three years to see how consistent that is. Uh, another thing that I can tell you, it's interesting and we're hoping, we're work, working for doing some weed control in Sanfoin, which is another forage that the university historically promote. But again, there's not a lot of herbicides. We have some preliminary information that's looking promising with some products. We're repeating this year. And the ultimate goal is to see if we can get a label for the farmers or local producers to be able to use those, those products safe for weed control in some point. So the research part will probably take uh, uh, close to three years. Now then it goes into the paperwork of getting the permits and things like that, which is totally out of our hands. And that, that part, it's, I don't know, maybe if the stars line up, maybe two years more. So it's, it's a process of, overall, if, if things go kind of smooth and perfect, uh, maybe four to five years, you know, it takes time. The Powell area, it's a very, uh, it's kind of a unique area in terms of production because besides the traditional crops, like I mentioned, like sugar beet and barley, and in a lesser degree, you know, dry beans and corn. Over here, there's a lot of seed production because of environmental conditions. This is a uh, great area to produce seed. So there's a whole bunch of different crops that let's say we could catalog as minor crops uh, that uh, the seed is produced in this area. And uh, in this case, uh, for, with the lupine, uh, it's actually there's interest from a seed company to see if eventually they can have that crop promoted in here so producers will plant it for seed and then that seed is, is you know, uh, sold anywhere in the U.S. where they actually plant the crop uh, to get forage or whatever the crop it is. Uh, so that's why we get to requests and we get to work with crops that are minor crops, alternative crops, there's different denominations of it. But the thing is with those minor uh, crops, let's call it that way, is that, uh, you know, prices and demand sometimes fluctuate uh, a lot between years and years. So there could be a year where it's a really good business to plant and then maybe two or three years down the road, there's overproduction or that, and then the price is not there anymore. So farmers start looking for another alternative here. And, and that's how there's pretty much a constant appearance of different crops. And one thing they all have in common is uh, that in general, there's little work in terms of done uh, best weed control options. You know. So it's part of what we do here.